Your Eminence, Archbishop Elvido Foros, Your Eminence, Metropolitan Alexios, Reverend Fathers, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Stella Villarakis. I am the president of the Tarpon Springs Maids of Athena Chapter Epiphany 111, and I'm the youngest granddaughter of Congressman Michael Villarakis. Unfortunately, Congressman Gus Villarakis, my uncle, could not be with us this evening due to his commitments in Washington, D.C. And so I have the great honor this evening to introduce my papu, the Honorable Michael Villarakis. I would like to briefly explain what Hellenism means to me. It is the selfless service for others, service to our Lord, and support of our families, our beautiful Greek culture, and the importance of education. Throughout his personal and professional life, my grandfather has embodied these characteristics of a true Hellene. There has been no better role model for his two sons, my father, Dr. Emmanuel Bilirakis, and my uncle, Congressman Gus Bilirakis, as well as myself, my sister Evelyn, and my cousins, Michael, Teddy, Manuel, and Nicholas. With my grandmother Evelyn at his side, they both have provided an enduring example of what a HEPA truly values. With that being said, I would like to introduce your friend, my papu, Congressman Michael Villarakis. Your Eminences, clergy, presidents, national president, local, Johnny, Johnny, what a job you've done. Proud of you, proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take us back to our past. And Johnny, I will take more than three minutes. Because our past has developed us. Without our knowing it, our past has developed us and made us what we are today. So we are who we have been. In my early years, I grew up in a typical Greek home in the 30s and the 40s. My father worked in the steel mills of the small city of Clareton, Pennsylvania, a few miles east of Pittsburgh. We spoke Greek at home, and with my father outside of the home, even though he spoke, read, and wrote English. I had a newspaper route at age 10 and sold the Sunday paper each Sunday at the same street corner in town. Frankly and truthfully, we lived in poverty. My mother often told me, we are poor. I refused to accept that and always disagreed when she said it. My father immigrated from the Valley Cadiz shortly before the start of World War I. His family were from Kalimnos and Karpathos. My mother came in the late 1920s by way of Cuba and Florida. During the Great Depression, he left Florida to look for work in the struggles of Clareton. The entire family, along with another entire family, the whole journey in the back of a truck. The small community of Hillies in Clareton had no church. We held services in the local Episcopalian church, but as the Greek story in America generally had built the Orthodox church early on, and then the community would grow around it, so the families of Clareton then women, children, organized, followed the leadership and instructions of the only Greek contractor in town, Mr. Spiritus. He has a great granddaughter here tonight. 
All of probably only one or two Greek families remain today at Clarendon. The church is still there, open and one, oh, one day a year for St. Anthony services. The city was, I've always felt, a good plant, a good place to grow up in. But there now it's imaginably depressed. Usually all the stores are closed, boarded up. Reminds me of the German cities I saw a few years after World War II. I was a good student in high school, even though I worked after school until 1 a.m. as a theater usher, I earned scholarships to college, but again, part of the Hellenic story, had to help my family, and so I turned 18 on a Sunday and was in the steel mill on Monday. I tell people that the war in Korea saved me, strange as that sounds. For two and a half years, I earned decent money in the mill. I turned over the pay envelope unopened, how many of you have done that over the years, to my father. Thus was helping there. Basically, was pretty comfortable, but not getting by education, which actually trapped in the middle. But when the war in Korea took place, I enlisted, served for four years. I came back to the bill four years later, but the yoke, the yoke, which had strangled me through no fault of my own, was broken when I left in 1951. And thus, I enrolled at the University of Pittsburgh in 1955 to study engineering. Pitt was a private school, and the veterans at Fort G.I. Bill College stipend of $110 per month was insufficient. I did not ask for a handout, did not look to government. I got a job at a factory quite a distance from the university where I worked at 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., five and six nights a week, while still a full-time gay engineering student and served as the president of my department and then the entire engineering and lives student body. How did I do it? I credit God above. And because I am who my lady ancestors have been. I graduated from Pittsburgh at age 29, mailed a fantastic, married a fantastic lady, and love the owners of Tarpon Springs, that would sit over there. She worked my way through law school at the University of Florida, where we had our sons, Emmanuel, who is now a physician, and Gus Costa, who became a lawyer and who succeeded me in the United States Congress, where he now serves and where he is now there, as you know, trying to help pick a speaker. I practice law, taught at the local college, served as a municipal judge, and volunteered in our community area. I've shared what I said with you tonight because I strongly feel it is emblematic, emblematic of much of the history of Hellenes in America and because it leads into who we are and that we are who we have been. We didn't complain when through our parents and grandparents, when we, uh, through our parents and grandparents, came to America, where we heard that money grows on trees, but to find out that only opportunity grows on trees, that life is hard. We didn't complain and cry crocodile tears that life's not fair, or look to the government to guarantee us a better life. We instinctively knew that the founders of this country, which we had heard so very much about, declared that all men are equal, that they said that this government 
and this country would be controlled by the people, for the people, that God gave the people, and endowed the people with, if you will, with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We instinctively knew that we had the God-created right to pursue happiness. And so we pursued it. You pursued it. You worked. You learned. You washed dishes and eventually bought the restaurant. You worked for an electrical contractor for poor wages, but you learned and worked hard and eventually bought the business my brother-in-law, Jack Algiers. You worked at all of the manual jobs at the grocery store, learned all of its facets, then bought that store and branched out to other stores, to other scores of stores and other businesses. You, we, pursued happiness. Did not expect a guarantee of happiness. You know, we are we're really pretty darn special. Not because we think we are, or say that we are, but look at what blood, and what blood flows through our veins. That blood's history throughout the ages determines who we are. Until 1982, I had not run for a government, governmental uh, elective office. I had been president of the local chamber of commerce, president of my Rotary Club, had founded a volunteer ambulance service, commander of the American Legion, worked with veterans in other areas of volunteer service in the Tampa Bay area. But in 1982, 